I am the Ryan, and this is the Far East Fusion. It's a series of videos where I learned to cook by making incredible combinations of Western dishes and dishes that I fell in love with while living in Asia for five years. I'm contractually obliged to tell you that what I'm about to make isn't a recipe, it's creativity. I'm not a professional cook, and I'm basically just winging this. So there's a chance that this will be terrible, and you'll have feelings that you've wasted your time. But then you'll realize that it was all worth it because you learned the greatest lesson of all. Today I'm making bacon cheeseburger Shanghai pot sticker buns. In Chinese they're called sheng jian manto, which means raw fried buns. These are almost a combination of baozi, the meat filled steam bun, and a xiaolong bao, the soup dumpling. They're fried up crispy on the bottom and then steamed, so you get a nice mix of textures. Inside is pork and a little bit of soup broth. They originated in Shanghai and have been a popular breakfast there for over 100 years. I can't see why filling them with the bacon cheeseburger wouldn't work. So let's get started the only way I seem to know how, with the dough. I have 55 milliliters of water in my measuring cup and I'm going to add two grams of dry active yeast and two grams of fine sugar to it. Quick stir. I love using a kitchen scale to cook with. It's the most accurate way to measure things and it's nice and easy. I'll put the bowl on it and zero the scale out. Now let's add 100 grams of flour. I know this doesn't seem like a lot of flour at all, but we're actually making two types of dough for this. This dough will be our leavened dough. Leavening a dough just means that you're adding gas to it. In most cases, it's done by adding yeast, single cell microorganisms that convert carbohydrates into carbon dioxide, which are what the little bubbles are in our bread. I'm going to slowly add the water and yeast and combine it with the flour. Stir that up until it's mixed and it starts to come together, and then you can get in there with your hands. It's feeling a touch dry, so I'm gonna add just a splash of water. While making these videos, I learned that you really have to pay attention to the feeling of the dough. There are a lot of things that can affect it. For example, if it recently rained or it's humid out. Now it feels a bit wet, but I'm gonna flour my work surface and start adding a bit of flour at a time as I need it. We wanna knead this for about 10 minutes. All right, my dough is smooth and not sticky. I'll set this aside and we can start on numero dough dose. Our second dough is a hot water dough. It's similar to a dough that you'd use to make a pie. The whole idea behind this dough is that it holds in liquid. The liquid isn't absorbed by the breading. So we're not gonna add yeast. We don't want the bubbles of carbon dioxide in this one. We're actually gonna mix boiling water with the flour. Normally the proteins in the flour will start absorbing the water and create gluten, but proteins don't like boiling water, so the water is left to be absorbed by the starches, which slows down gluten production and forms a gelatinous mesh of starch, making the dough semi-elastic. I'll also add a bit of room temperature water. Now it's all about slowly combining it so there aren't any pockets of flour or water. This technique also allows the dough to get crispier, so when we fry them up we should get a nice browning. This is together, so I'll knead it for about 10 minutes. If you paid attention to the measurements, you'll know that 75% of the dough is this hot water dough, and 25% is the leavened dough. You can adjust this depending on how much liquid you're putting in, how bready you want it to be. Some Sheng Jian Manto are made with 100% hot water dough, some are made with 100% leavened dough. 20 minutes total of kneading, and I am feeling it. Time to take out the guns. All right, this dough is ready to be rested. I'll let these two hang out for like two hours, let them get to know each other, and then they're gonna be together forever. I don't care about your yeast, Donna. I love you. Oh, I love you too, Donald. And it's time to make our filling. I've got a half kilo of ground beef in the bowl. I'm using my regular burger recipe, plus a few ingredients that I'd normally just put on top. About a half an onion, finely chopped. Normally I'd put this raw on my burger, but we're gonna incorporate it with the meat. A couple cloves of minced garlic, which does usually get mixed in with my meat. I love pickling my burger, so I'm gonna chop some up and include it in the mix. Finally, I've got some sriracha. I always include this in my burgers. It adds spice and a nice rich umami taste. I'll mix this up well. Ah, I forgot the salt and pepper. Now I have to wash my hands. Wash your hands with soap and hot water uh, for the length of time it takes to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Donald, happy birthday to you. 
freshly ground pepper and salt. And then give it a good mix again. So the normal filling for Shengjian Manto is pork, but they also include a gelled broth. They'll use animal fat to make a broth and then cool it so it turns into a gel, and then break it up and mix the bits of gelled broth with the pork. Then when it's cooked, it melts into a juicy soup. I thought about doing this, but that's not a burger, so I decided against it. I'm a bit worried that these will be too dry, but I think with the bacon and cheese grease, it should be okay. All right, I'm gonna toss this into the fridge until we're ready for it, which won't be for another couple hours. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, Doanna. Happy birthday to you. Let's see, let's, let's do a little bit of coloring. Okay, dough has been resting for two hours. Let's have a look at it. Here's our yeast dough, and here's our hot water dough. They look about the same size, but if we go back in time, you'll see that the yeast dough is probably doubled in size. I'm going to combine these by first flattening each one, then stacking the lemon dough on top, and I'll roll that flat. Then you wanna roll it up and then roll it out again. Roll it up and roll it out. Repeat that for a total of five times, and now dough Ann and Donald are married, and they'll slowly start resenting each other. I'll roll it up and stash it away to rest for 20 minutes. While that happens, I'll fry up some bacon. So I've crisped this right up. I'm hoping the crunchiness will stick around after it's all been cooked. And we'll just roughly chop this and then set it aside for now. Back to the dough. I'll flour the work surface and give this a quick knead. Now roll it out into a tube so it's easy to divide. So I'm aiming for each piece to be about 15 grams. That's 20, but not bad for a first try. That's 14, almost perfect. 13, I'm getting worse. 15, I'm awesome. And I think this will be easier and quicker if I cut it. 15 on the button. So I'll roll all these into a ball. And then we'll coat them in a bit of oil and let them rest for another 20 minutes. I've got my dough, I've got my meat, and we're ready to make some little bao. First we'll flatten them all out with our hands. Now one at a time we'll roll them out thinner. Try to roll the edges out more than the middle because we want the middle to stay a little bit thicker. Then take it in your hand and top it. First a slice of cheese. I've got a crappy processed cheddar here. Then a sprinkle of bacon and a spoonful of meat. And here is my first attempt at wrapping a bao. I'm basically folding bits at a time over like an accordion. a bacon breach. The crispy bacon shards have pierced it. I'll just patch that up. That'll work. It's not beautiful, but I'll be frying these seam side down, so it doesn't really matter. I promise you I'll only get better at this, and I have 37 tries. Actually, let's fast forward to the 31st try, when I'm in my prime, right before my body starts deteriorating. So, after 30, I've discovered a few things. First, you want to make sure that the bacon is covered by the meat to prevent bacon breaches. One of the worst enemies of the bacon cheeseburger Shanghai pot sticker. I found it easier to put the bow down on the counter. 
You're basically taking the dough about a half an inch away and stretching it over, then accordion folding it, pinching it, and repeating it around the edges. Pushing the meat down with your thumb until you have just a little hole. Then you can just pinch that off. So I am out of meat, but I have a few more wraps left, so I think let's do a little bit of experimenting. I found a mushroom. Let's stick a whole mushroom in there with a slice of cheese. I've got some pear chutney here, courtesy of my friends at Foros Ahi. I actually shot a video of them making their hot sauce that you can watch by clicking the video that's popping up somewhere right now. What else we got? How about a slice of pepperoni, some chopped up tomato, a bit of green onion, and a slice of cheese? How about yogurt and granola? Found some Toblerone bar in the cupboard. That can't possibly be bad. Pate. Will that be gross? Yeah, let's give it a go. So we're ready to cook this now. There are two stages to this. The first is to fry it in some oil. I'm going to use olive oil, but in China they'd probably use vegetable oil or sunflower oil. I'm using my cast iron pan, which will only let me do about 10 at a time, but it's probably for the best. You could also just use a normal frying pan, but you're gonna need something that you can put a lid on. Also, heat up the pan so it's hot before you pour the oil in. Then arrange the buns in the pan. They should be touching, just squeeze them right in. And I'll let this fry for about three to four minutes. I'm frying mine seam side down, but if you have pretty seams, you can do it the other way and show off your superior skills. Make me feel like a piece of crap. Thanks a lot. After the bottom is crisp, we're pouring in boiling water, which is going to produce a lot of steam, so be careful here. You want the water to be around halfway up, then cover it and let it steam for six minutes. You don't really want to open it, but if it seems like the water is totally evaporated, add a little bit more. Okay, it's time to pry these out. A lot of mine burst open, but they're looking pretty tasty. Let's food pour these up. I'm gonna do another batch. Oil in, dough in, fry for three minutes. Then it's boiling water in, lid on, and steam for six minutes. Okay, this batch is looking great. I've sprinkled some chopped up green onion on them, and I'll also sprinkle some black sesame seeds on. This is how they'd be served in China, and it kind of works for us, like a sesame seed bun. Isn't that pretty? I'm just gonna toss my mystery variety pack into the frying pan. And let's try these bacon cheeseburger Shanghai pot stickers. Guess what? It's delicious. I think it could use a bit more moisture, but I actually did make a batch with a squirt of ketchup and mustard in them. Let's try those. Yeah, those are better juicier, and a burger isn't a burger without some condiments. We can also just dip them in ketchup. Oh yeah, that's an improvement too. Maybe that's the way to go. Traditionally, Shengjian Manto would be dipped in a dark vinegar, maybe with some soy sauce in it and a little chili oil. But I think ketchup is the way to go here. Maybe even a mix of ketchup and mustard. The dough is really great. It's got the crunch and the top of it is really moist. It just kind of melts in your mouth. I'm not really getting the bacon crunch. So maybe it would have been better if I just included the chopped up raw bacon in with the meat. That way we wouldn't have to worry about the crispy bacon tearing our dough. But overall, super tasty, super fun to make. And I think that's it. Other than 
trying these weird ones, I guess. Hey. You wanna take a gamble? Yeah. <laughs> What's in there? I don't know. Tomato? 